Good morning, friends. It's 5.30 in the morning. I'm still in the Yellowstone area. I'm going back into the National Park this morning. Let's leave our campsite here, drive into town, drive into West Yellowstone, get gas, and then head into the National Park. All right, guys, take note of this mountain here on the right. I'll talk more about it in a second. All right, we are parked here in the trailhead, or in the parking lot at the trailhead. For this mountain that I pointed out just a second ago, we're gonna hike up it. It's called Bunsen Peak, 2.1 miles up to the top there. And that is the first thing we'll be doing today. And basically right out of the parking lot, we've got two options here. This is an old road that goes kind of around the mountain, but now we're going up this way, up the mountain itself. I have not climbed a mountain in Yellowstone National Park before, and this is a relatively easy one. It's a relatively quick hike. And like I said earlier, this is Bunsen Peak, named after, believe it or not, the guy who invented the Bunsen burner. He also studied geysers in Iceland, and uh, apparently his, his work, his studies on geysers uh, earned him the admiration of, I think it was the US Geological Survey, and so they named this mountain in his honor. Alright, I made it to the top. Don't you just love being out in nature? No sign of human intervention at all. Completely natural. Apparently this is some kind of radio communication equipment. Maybe a weather station thing. Who knows. This, uh, this little hut says radio shop. The view is kind of obscured by trees here, but this is Mammoth out here. It's the north entrance to Yellowstone. I think this is Electric Peak, and if not, then I will write the correct name of that mountain on the screen here. And then over this way we have, uh, I believe it's called Swan Flat. Sorry for the wind. And then over on the other side, we have some more views of distant mountains and valleys. It's a nice spot. It'd be nicer without all this junk, but I guess they gotta put us somewhere. But yeah, this over here is, is really the best aspect of the view. And then back over to Electric Peak, or whatever that is. And by the way, the elevation up here is 8,564 feet. It took 56 minutes to get up here. All right, we're gonna head off the other side, off the back side of the peak. We're not gonna go back down the, the way we came. Gonna head to our next destination, which I think is like, I don't know, two miles, four miles away. Uh, this, the circuit that I'll be doing today is, is 10 miles round trip, or 10 miles total, so, um, let's head off to our next destination, somewhere off the back side of the mountain here. This canyon is where I'm headed, down into the depths below. So here's the canyon that I'm heading into. You can see the river down below. I think it's the, uh, I don't remember if it's the Gardner or the Gallatin River, but there it is down there. So this canyon that you see here is called Sheep Eater Canyon. 
and the Sheep Eaters were a Native American tribe that lived in Yellowstone. They're actually the only Native American tribe to live in Yellowstone year-round. And they're called the Sheep Eaters because they would eat, uh, you know, bighorn sheep that were on the cliffs in this area. I believe they would, like, drive the sheep down into certain areas and they would use wooden poles, like from trees, to funnel the sheep into certain areas and I think that would lead the sheep eventually over a cliff and they'd fall to their death. Put a pin in that because I want to talk more about that uh, later on in the afternoon at a different spot. The trail has been pretty steep, but uh, lots of switchbacks. So it wasn't too bad coming down, but going back up again, woo! All right, we've made it. To Osprey or Osprey. Falls. peak back to the car. I don't think I'll film much of it, so I'll see you back at the car. But overall, definitely worth coming to. Definitely worth the hike. guys back in the car it took me two hours to get back from the waterfall total trip stats here it was 10.82 miles four hours 50 minutes and uh, gained and lost about 2800 feet of elevation I'm gonna head now less than a mile down the road to another little waterfall that's right on the road and uh, it's one that I've never really been to I've seen it from the road but I want to stop and get a good look at it here's the road and here's the waterfall. It's called Rustic Falls. And I'm going to drive a little bit further down to where these cars are to get a better view of the waterfall. And here's the waterfall from the other parking area. Beautiful waterfall. I love when they fan out across the across the cliff like that. And remember how I said that the Native Americans here would put, um, make like shoots or funnels out of, out of trees to funnel the animals to go over the cliff? This is one spot at, at this waterfall, at Rustic Falls, where that was found by one of the early, I think it was one of the early park superintendents. Um, someone back in the day uh, discovered that here at this waterfall. So I'm mostly done with Yellowstone now. I've driven about, I don't know, 15 miles from where I last was from that waterfall. 
I'm still in the National Park. I'm on my way out of the National Park. I'm mostly done, but there are a few little things, a few little roadside things that I've noticed along the way over the past few days that I want to go see because I have no idea what they are. And so one of those things is here. It's called, uh, I think, Clearwater Springs. Uh, let's go take a look. All right, Clearwater Springs. Looks like it's some very green water in there, or rather the, the water is clear, but there's a lot of algae in there in that water, on the rocks. Nothing too crazy. There are some other thermal pools over here. Steaming. And how crazy would it be to be an early explorer of this area and just come across Yellowstone? That's wild. Some little bubbling pools. And that's it. All right, let's go on to, uh, to the next spot on our way back out of the park. All right, this spot is Roaring Mountain. And the mountainside is kind of burned here and there's steam coming out of a hole in the mountain. If you drive past here in the morning, you'll see uh, steam coming from several other vents on the mountain. But right now, it's mostly that one. Okay, we're pulling into our next spot. It's called Frying Pan Spring. And that's all I know about it. But it does smell like rotten eggs out here. Ooh, that smell is strong. Oh man. <laughs> that is rough. Cool little spring though. I mean, these are obviously not as spectacular as the pools that look like they've had Skittles dropped into them, the multicolored pools. But it's still really neat. And then there's another pool out over here in the distance. All right, we are at our last little roadside stop off for the day. It's another water feature, another thermal feature called Barrel Spring. the best of the little roadside springs so far. But that's it for this adventure, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and the adventure. Let me know what your favorite part was, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.